To provide insight on the recently concluded search for Bob's successor, Baylor University President Linda Livingstone will provide remarks. Linda is a member of the three-person Big 12 Board of Directors Executive Committee, which along with Texas Tech President Lawrence Skuvenick and University of Kansas Chancellor Doug Gerard oversaw the commissioner search process. Linda? Thank you, Bob. It's a pleasure to be with you today, and I am pleased to be able to represent the Big 12 Board of Directors in the introduction of our new commissioner. Uh, chair of the board, Lawrence Skuvenick, president of Texas Tech, wished he could be with you today. He had a previous commitment in Washington, D.C., so as vice chair of the board, I have the privilege of being with you today and will attempt to answer some of your questions today and provide some context for the hiring of our new commissioner. First, I want to extend my deep appreciation to Commissioner Bowlesby for his leadership of the conference over the last decade. And if you look back to where we were uh, nearly 365 days ago to where we are today, I think Bob deserves uh, tremendous credit in the work he did with the athletic directors, with the board of directors, uh, to bring in BYU, Central Florida, uh, Cincinnati and Houston in such a timely manner and to, to prepare us for where we are today. Really a, a very different place than we were a year ago, a position of strength and we're deeply grateful to Bob, uh, not just for his work over the last year, but certainly over the entire decade that he's led the Big 12 Conference. Well, this is an exciting time in the Big 12. Obviously we're excited about the start of football season, the start of a new school year coming up soon, and about the future of the Big 12 Conference. And so it's my distinct honor today to be able to introduce first time publicly uh, our new commissioner, Brett Yormark. Uh, I'm certain that Brett is just deeply appreciative of the way he was welcomed into the Big 12 Conference with, once again, conference realignment at the top of the list of things to deal with. I talked to him on the phone a couple of days after he was named, which was a couple of days after that uh, that happened with USC and UCLA, and I said, well, welcome to college athletics, and you thought working for Jay-Z was really exciting. So, uh, and as a reminder, his first day on the job is not officially until August 1st, but I know he's already spent countless hours and probably all of his cell phone minutes working on behalf of the Big 12 in partnership with Commissioner Bowlesby, our athletic directors and our presidents as uh, he works to help us navigate uh, the uncertain and the uh, continually changing environment we face in college athletics today. Well, you've read a lot about Brett and his background. As you know, he's been a leader at the intersection of sports and entertainment, working with global brands in NASCAR, the Brooklyn Nets, the NBA, and top music performers. Uh, he's brokered some of the largest sports sponsorships ever through his work on, in NASCAR and the NBA, while also making the Barclays Center the new home of college basketball in New York City. <clears throat> uh, the challenges that we face in intercollegiate athletics are going to require hard work, uh, innovative, creative thinking, and strategic partnerships, and all of those qualities uh, really represent the career that Brett Yormark has had and the way he has led other organizations that he's been a part of. So we are looking forward to his leadership of the Big 12 and what's in store for us in the years ahead. So please join me in welcoming our new Big 12 Commissioner, Brett Yormark. Thank you, so much. Thank, you. Thank you, Linda. Now it's a pl pleasure to introduce incoming Big 12 Commissioner, Brett Yormark, for his remarks. Brett? Thank you, Bob. I am so humbled to be here today and thrilled to join the Big 12 family. I'm in a transition period right now, and starting August 1, I will be working full-time out of the conference office. With the events of the last couple of weeks, conference composition is once again at the forefront of college athletics. As such, I have been very involved with the stakeholders both inside and outside the Big 12 regarding our path forward and opportunities to grow both the Big 12 brand and business. However, before I get into my vision for the Big 12, I would like to first recognize and thank my amazing family, all of which are here today. My wife, Elena, my daughter, Madison, and my son, Drake, for their incredible love and support. Thank you to Linda, Board Chairman Lauren Skubinek and the entire Big 12 Board of Directors for having the confidence in me to be selected the conference's fifth commissioner. And a special thank you to the incredible 
Big 12 ADs who have welcomed me with open arms. To the SWAs, FARs, administrators, coaches, and student athletes of the Big 12, I look forward to working on your behalf and being a great resource for you. And lastly, to Big 12 Commissioner Bob Bowlesby, thank you for all you have done for this conference over the last 10 years and for everything you have done for intercollegiate athletics during the course of your great career. You have, laugh, you have left a lasting legacy and set a very high bar for me to follow. You will be an incredible resource for me, and I look forward to a long relationship with you. Thank you again, Bob. Thank you. you can give Bob a big hand, please. As all of you get to know me, you will learn that, that I am about family, integrity, loyalty, and dependability. My career path has often found me in the underdog position, although it has inspired me to do the unexpected. With a background in the NBA, NASCAR, and most recently in the entertainment business, you might ask, why college athletics now? Early in my career, I put together a progression ladder. It started with working for the New Jersey Nets, and it ended with a vision to be in college athletics. My passion for the collegiate space was fueled even more so with my many years at Barclays Center, where in a very short period of time, we became a college basketball destination. What excites me most about joining the Big 12 is the transformative moment in front of all of us today. We have an opportunity to grow and bi build the Big 12 brand and business, be aspirational, define our point of difference, all while never losing our commitment to always compete and develop our student athletes at the highest levels. Moments like these do not happen often, and we must seize them and make the most of them. It will require incredible work and collaboration. One thing is for sure, there is no doubt the Big 12 is open for business. We will leave no stone unturned to drive value for the conference. Just as I pledge to the board, we will be bold and humble, aggressive and thoughtful, and innovative and creative, all in an effort to position the conference in a way that not only grows the Big 12 brand and business, but makes us a bit more contemporary. Although there will be challenges ahead, Bob has left me an incredible foundation to build upon. During August and September, I will conduct a listening tour and visit all 14 campuses. I will meet with stakeholders to gain a historical point of view and to ask, what does success look like? Following my first 60 to 90 days, I will report back to the board with my observations and how I see our path forward. I will work very closely with our member institutions to ensure we are prepared to seize opportunities that benefit our league and if those happen within the first 60 days, we will move as fast as we need to. One thing is crystal clear. There is no higher priority than to best position the Big 12 for its upcoming multimedia rights negotiations. Everything we do must create momentum for these negotiations, as well as building the, the value of the Big 12 brand and business. I am learning the issues facing the NCA and the conference in real time, such as name, image, and likeness, the transfer portal, student athlete well-being, considerations of the NCA Transformation Committee, and the CFP expansion. I look forward to learning the perspectives of our stakeholders on these issues and more during my visit to campus. I've been actively engaged in realignment and appreciate the incredible input I have received from everyone throughout the conference. Exploration and optionality is at the forefront of what we are focused on. Anything considered must be additive and not dilutive. Sometimes the best deals are the ones that don't get done. Although I have a lot to learn, I'm confident in my background and that it's well suited for this role, and I'm excited to go to work. I embrace the responsibility to be a steward of this great conference and to carry out the mission and vision of our member institutions. As much as we will aspire to do well, we must also aspire to do good 
and use our platform to drive positive change around us. I am thankful for this incredible opportunity and I'm thrilled to be here. I want to wish all the football coaches and our student athletes a very successful season. I want to thank everyone for attending Big 12 Football Media Days. I look forward to working with you and getting to know each and every one of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brett. We will now open it up to questions from the media. However, sure. before we do, uh, Baylor President Linda Livingstone will be leaving the stage to take a 9 o'clock call. She will come back after the conclusion of that call and will be available for one-offs. So uh, we do request that uh, in order to ask a question that you please raise your hand, wait for the microphone holder, and then please state your name and affiliation when asking your question. Questions? Ms. Yermark, Randy Peterson, Des Moines Register. Is the Big 12 actively engaged with the four Pac-12 conference schools that's being reported fairly widely? First of all, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. As I said in my opening comments, we're exploring all options, and we're open for business. And optionality is good and we're vetting through all of them. I think it's fair to say I've received a lot of phone calls, a lot of interest. People understand the direction of the Big 12, and we're exploring those levels of interest. Nothing is imminent, but we're working hard to make sure that we position the Big 12 in the best possible way on a go-forward basis. Okay, in the middle over here, Brett, or uh, Kirk, stand up please so they can get the microphone to you. Uh, Kirk Bowles from the Austin American Statesman. Uh, Brett, could you give us reasons why it would make more sense for the Big 12 to grab teams from the Pac-12 other than the other way around? That's a great question. And again, I'll say that there is not a definitive plan right now. We're exploring all options. I can assure you that given the time I've spent with our presidents, our chancellors, our athletic directors, we are a very unified group. Bob mentioned that during his opening comments. It was one of the things that drew me to the job, the alignment that the board and AD community all have uh, for going forward. So as we vet out the possibilities, everything will be additive, nothing will be dilutive, and I feel very confident that our conference is in the best position it's ever been in before. Bob is leaving us in a great place. Could I also follow up and just say, do you feel like the Big 12 could become one of these super conferences like the SEC and Big 10? I, as you get to know me, I don't really pay much attention to anything else but us. And I think there's incredible upside with the Big 12. It's one of the reasons, again, I'm here today. We have a chance to build our brand, our business, nationalize our conference in a way that hasn't been done before, and I'm excited to go to work and, and start that process. Senator Al. Brett Curtis, Quillen, KCDN TV, Channel 6 in Waco, straight ahead on the aisle, sir. Oh, okay, thank uh, you. I'm not going to ask a realignment question, but you've mentioned name, image, and likeness a few times. Given your background, how do you feel you can best guide the universities as everybody kind of navigates this new thing that came to be last summer? Well, well, I can say at a high level, I'm an advocate of NIL. I've got my feet wet to some degree at Rock Nation, where we have been engaged with NIL. I, from a personal point of view, having not really spoken to many of our key stakeholders about it, I think there needs to be guardrails. There probably needs to be uniformity. And maybe the conference needs to take a bigger role in what NIL looks like going forward. But I think given my background, uh, having spent so much in the time in the commercial space, I'm very well suited for NIL in whatever form it takes on a go-forward basis. 
Yeah, Barry Trammell with the Oakland Homan. Uh, I think you were just on June 29th. I don't know how much earlier than that you knew you'd been hired. Two days later, we get the Pac-12 the Pac news of USC and UCLA. What were your reactions when you heard that? Was it some sort of, hey, this is interesting, or was it, holy crap, what have I got myself into, or what? What was your what was your reactions when two days into the job? Probably both. You know, all hell breaks <laughs> loose. Well, pro my reaction was probably both, but I was excited by it in many respects because I saw there was opportunity, and I figured I'd be thrown into it uh, a little sooner than I had thought. And as Linda said, uh, I've been working very closely with Bob and others on defining our path forward. So I, I do look at it as an opportunity. Uh, as I said earlier, we're going to vet out all the possibilities and options and determine where we go. Yes, Commissioner Yormark, Robert Allen with the Cowboy Radio Network, uh, Pope's Report, Triple Play Sports Radio. Got a few jobs. Um, I have two. I have two right now well, for the next couple do, of weeks. And yes. You do, and your future one is, is quite a challenge. The man next to you will tell you that, I'm sure. I uh, wanted to ask you two questions real quick. Progression ladder, very intrigued by that, that philosophy. You touched on it a little bit, but what made the Big 12 and being the commissioner here an important part of your progression ladder? Secondly, I know you've met with the board. I know you've met with the athletic directors. I also heard you sought out the uh, cell phone numbers of all the head football coaches. From those conversations, if that's true, what have you gleaned from the head football coaches in your conversations? Well, first of all, I'm thrilled to be the next commissioner of the Big 12. As I said in my open, opening comments, I always had a vision to be in college sports. Candidly, I thought it might have been an AD. I wasn't sure. But I was enamored with the space. It was fueled during my time at Barclay Center. So when this opportunity presented itself, I said, Let, let's give it a great shot. And thankfully, it all worked out. As it relates to the football coaches, I didn't have many conversations with the football coaches. Really, for me, it was a way to introduce myself, uh, let them know I'm a resource. I'm 24-7, and I'm thrilled to be part of the Big 12 family. And so I did have some nice dialogue with many of the coaches, and it was more just very high level, me saying hello and, and again, telling them I'm looking forward to see them, seeing them this week. All right, thank you. Thank you. Hey, Brad's Garen, the Amig of the Tulsa World, right toward the middle. How's it going? Hey, there, there you are. Welcome to the conference. Uh, Thank you. How, how do you look at the situation with uh, Oklahoma and Texas? Is it, a, is it a distraction for you with everything that you've got to tackle right out of the gate? Have you, have you had a chance to build any relationships in Austin or Norman? Something that I know you're, you're going to want to see is important as they move forward as well. Well, first of all, the folks from Texas, both the president and AD, as well as at Oklahoma, they've been very gracious to me. Uh, they were part of the process and me getting hired. So I appreciate the support that I received. I'm sure there's going to be a moment in time where we're going to sit down and discuss the future. Obviously, I don't start till August 1, and I look forward to doing that. And um, that's really all I can say at this point in time. Uh, Amor Richardson from orangebloods.com. Uh, Congratulations on the job. Thank you. Um, as a follow-up to the Texas OU question, is it your goal for Texas and new OU to remain in this conference throughout the remainder of that contract? Or with new teams coming in, does it behoove you to maybe try to figure out ways for you guys to part ways a little bit sooner? From my perspective, and again, I don't start till August 1. I have a lot to learn. But in any situation like this, I always look for a win-win scenario. That being said, it's important that whatever happens is in the best interest of this conference. But I look forward at the right time to have those conversations. But thank you for your question. In the back. Go on the aisle there, right there. Shahan J. Rajan, CBS Sports. Uh, Brett, welcome to the conference. Thank you. Um, you know, 
obviously you have a long experience uh, working in the Northeast, working in New York, working uh, in Brooklyn. What kind of draw you to this space and uh, what kind of made this conference and this timing right? Well, as I said, well, first of all, I've, I've spent a little time in Dallas over my career. When I was at NASCAR, I used to come here, obviously, for race weekends. And I like the market. It's a very vibrant market and i um, looking forward to being part of the community. You know, my, my plan, obviously, is to move here. And um, I'm excited about that. And just generally speaking, you know, the, the move to the Big 12 was very exciting for me because I think we can have a very special moment. Uh, I think there is incredible upside here. Again, Bob has left me in a, in a great spot. And, and my goal is now to take the baton and move it forward. And, and I plan on doing that with the collective staff at the Big 12. And, you know, in my opening comments, I didn't have a chance uh, to thank the staff uh, at the Big 12. But I've spent the last two days in our office. Bob put together an incredible team, and I look forward to working with them. They have welcomed me with open arms, and I look forward to doing some incredible things with them over the course of the next couple of years. Jamie Plunkett with Frogs today. In your opening statement, you mentioned creating a strong brand. From your experience, what are some steps that go into creating a strong brand? And then on the other side of that, what are some signals that a brand is strong? You know, from my perspective, again, Bob has positioned the brand in a, in a great way, but I think there's opportunities as I learn a little bit more about the brand and our fan base to become a little bit more national to position our brand a little younger, hipper, cooler. How do we connect to um, youth culture, diversify some of the things we're doing? Um, I, I, and I think we have a great opportunity to do that. You know, I've been in the brand building business and the business building business in my days at NASCAR, where we took it, a, a sport from predominantly the South and where the roots were, we made it a national phenomenon. Obviously, I, in Brooklyn, we, we moved the team from the Nets, which was a bit of a depressed brand and franchise and made it into a global brand. And um, my goal is to do something very similar here. Um, and I'm excited about it and I'm excited to go to work. Hey, Brett. Bob Ballou, CBS Austin. Just kind of building on that, you mentioned the words more contemporary conference in your opening statements as well. What does that look like to you? Can you detail a little bit about more contemporary, younger, hipper? What does that mean to you? Well, for me, again, I, I, I think there's opportunities to use social media, maybe a little bit more different, engage with our fans. I, I want to use content, you know, to help us with our storytelling. I think that's truly important. And I think when future student athletes of this conference are thinking about where do they want to go next, you know, as they're making those decisions, what schools to go to, I want our brand to be aspirational. I want them to say, I want to go to the Big 12 for all the right reasons. And collectively with the group at the conference office, our goal is to do just that. So I'm very excited about it. I think there's a real opportunity. Mr. Yormark, uh, Yormark, excuse me, Jackson Schneider, KSL Radio, Solana, Kansas. Uh, you mentioned a minute ago the transition from the Nets to the Barclays Center and kind of that rejuvenation that you did with that brand. Uh, how do you see the similarities here and maybe some bullet points on how you plan to do that with this conference? Well, there are similarities in how you build a band, brand, generally speaking. But I need to spend a little bit more time with the staff, get a better understanding of some of the data points. Um, I know the, the conference has done a bit of a brand study, which I need to dive into. They've outsourced that, that exercise. But I think, again, very similar to what I've done in my past, there's an opportunity to nationalize this brand, to be more aspirational, um, to appeal to youth culture, to get younger and hipper. And those are the things I'll be working on. Mr. Yarmark, um, just a piece of nuts and bolts here. What's football scheduling going to look like for next season? I can't answer that just yet. Um, I, I've got to, when I start on August 1st, meet with the team and, and better understand that. It's a great question, and in a couple of weeks, I'll, I'll be able to answer that 
uh, more appropriately. Hi, over here, Heather Dinich with ESPN. Two questions. The first is, what are your early thoughts on expanding the playoff from four to 12 teams? And the second question is, I understand that you know Pac-12 Commissioner George Klyavka from the same media circles. What's your relationship like with him now that you are exploring expansion from his conference? Good questions. Nice to meet you. As far as the first one on CFP, um, I plan on spending a lot of time with Bob, obviously. He was intimately involved in expansion conversations and modeling. Um, I do get D1 ticker now, so I'm keeping myself abreast of who's saying what in that space. But um, I look forward to spending time also with Bill Hancock. He's one of the first meetings I'll be taking here in Dallas uh, when I start on August 1. And I look forward to having meaningful conversations with my fellow Power 5 commissioners on that subject. As it relates to George, George and I have known each other for quite some time, but I know many of the other Power Five commissioners. I've been in, engaged with them daily on conversations. Um, George is a great guy. He's doing a good job at the Pac-12, and um, no different than the other commissioners. We're, we're vetting out all possibilities and, and options, um, but I'm, I'm glad to be part of the group. You know, there's a great group of guys there. Commissioner, welcome. Uh, Kellis Robinette here from the Wichita Eagle, Kansas City Star. I was wondering, when it does come time to negotiate a new media rights deal with TV networks, streamers, whatever it may be, what do you think the top selling points will be when you're talking with those people? How attractive is this conference to new TV networks? Well, first of all, I'm bullish on the conference. And what we look like today and what we look like when we enter those negotiations could be very different. Um, obviously, we've got three more years with our current partners. I've had a working relationship with ESPN and Fox for many years. I'm big fans of what they do. They're the best in the business. And I look forward to, at the right time, engaging with them on meaningful conversations on how we can enhance and amplify the value equation and, and how they glamorize and promote and market our great conference. So there aren't any specifics that I can speak to now as far as how we're going to position ourselves differently because there's a long time between now and, and when we'll commence negotiation. But I'm looking forward to that moment. And as I said earlier, everything we do from this point forward will lead towards that negotiation period, how we build our brand, how we build our business, conference realignment. All that will probably play a role in what, whatever dialogue we have. Uh, Bryce Cherry, Waco Tribune Herald. Brett, welcome to the conference. Thank you. Uh, the, the gentleman sitting to your right there, uh, even after 10 years, was able to surprise us from time to time. Last year, he dropped a bomb that he was a college wrestler, which I didn't know. Maybe other media in the room did at the time. But uh, what is something about Brett Yormark that we might not know. Well, we would be surprised to know. That's a great question. I mean, listen, I used to be a drummer, believe it or not. You know, I love music, and obviously I spent some time at Rock Nation, and I haven't even, you know, kind of discussed that with my kids that often over the years, but I was a drummer, uh, and my twin brother was a drummer also, and we played in a band, and I'm dating myself, but not many people know that, and maybe that's where I developed my fondness for music, generally speaking. But um, I'd say that's probably something that's unexpected when people hear about it. All right, and with that, that will conclude the question and answer portion. Thank you very much. Look forward to interfacing with everybody over the next two days. And again, thank you very much for being here.